Hello friends, this video on plant growth and development part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So we will discuss about absolute and relative growth rate. Now this is a very important concept which you, which you should understand very clearly. Because we spoke about growth rate. This growth rate was present in case of both arithmetic growth and geometric growth. Here we will introduce these two terms to differentiate between a linear growth rate and an exponential growth rate. So let us see what is absolute and relative growth rate. The term absolute growth rate means total growth per unit time. Now, these are similar to the terms which you have learned in your physics like absolute velocity and relative velocity. So, whenever it is relative, it is compared to something else. Right? And absolute means it has to be, it has nothing to do with comparison. So, absolute growth rate is total growth per unit time. Whereas when you talk about relative, it is growth of a particular system per unit time. So relative growth rate is always expressed per unit the initial parameter. So I'll explain it to you with the help of an example. Okay. So let us suppose you have um, something, let us say you have uh, a leaf. The leaf it is a very young leaf and it is going to grow over a period of time. Now let us suppose initially the leaf had an area of say 5 cm square. Over a period of time the area became 10 cm square. So when you talk about absolute growth rate, you just talk about the increase in growth over that period of time. That's all. But when you talk about relative growth rate, you talk about the increase in growth with respect to the initial size. So the increase in size, that is it increased in size by 5 cm square. So how much did it increase with respect to what it was? It was 5 cm square. Now it became 10 cm square. So the growth rate is, the relative growth rate is 100%. So it became 100%. It became two times when compared to the initial size. So whenever we'll talk about relative growth rate, we'll have a comparison to the initial size, whether it is initial size or initial length or initial area or initial uh, uh, cell size, whatever it is. So that initial parameter comparison has to be done when it is relative growth rate. But no such comparison is done in case of absolute growth rate. Therefore, absolute growth rate grows linearly. So it will be like it will increase with time. Whereas relative growth rate grows exponentially because whenever you compare it with the initial parameter, the growth rate is like more. So the increase is exponentially. So now we will take the same example. Let us suppose you take a leaf and the leaf increases in size. So when you talk about relative growth rate, you will compare the increase with the initial size. Now, we will take the same example of the leaf in this slide and with calculations, we will actually show how do we calculate absolute growth rate and how do we calculate relative growth rate. So let us take an example of two leaves. So let us suppose this is leaf one. And this is leaf 2. Right? Now as you can see in the picture it is quite evident that both the leaves have different sizes. Right? So let us suppose the initial size of this leaf is uh, let me write it here. So this is my leaf 1 and this is my leaf 2. Let us suppose in the, for leaf 1, the area of the leaf is, initial area is 10 cm square. Now since the leaf 2 looks bigger, so obviously the initial area here will be more and let us suppose that the initial area is 50 cm square. So these are just data, nothing to link with reality. Right? So these are the initial areas of these two leaves. Now let us suppose that over a period of time both the leaves have grown and now leaf 1 has become this much big. The light green area actually shows how much it has increased. 
Leaf 2 has also increased in size. Now let us suppose the final area of leaf 1 is 20 cm square. Similarly, the final area of leaf 2 is 60 cm square. Right? Now we have to calculate absolute growth rate and relative growth rate for both of them. Now when you calculate absolute growth rate. Now what I said absolute growth rate has nothing to do with the initial parameter. So it has nothing to do with what was the initial area of the leaf. It will just calculate the growth per unit time. Right. So what is the growth? Growth is final area minus initial area that is equal to 20 minus 10 which is equal to 10 centimeter square. So this is the increase in area. So when you say absolute growth rate so that will be equal to increase in area per unit time. Now let us suppose that both of them sh had shown this increase in area say in one hour. So that is the time, right? So this will become 10 by 1. Now I am not considering the unit conversion and all those stuff. So here this denotes your absolute growth rate. Similarly, if you calculate the absolute growth rate for this one, leaf 2, this will also be AF minus A initial divided by time. So what is AF? 60 minus 50 by time. So this is also 10 per unit time. So basically both of them have the same absolute growth rate because the increase is same in both the cases. Here also the increase is 10 centimeter square. Here also the increase is 10 cm square. Therefore, the absolute growth rate is same for both leaf 1 and leaf 2. But when you calculate the relative growth rate, you notice a difference. So let us calculate the relative growth rate. So what is relative growth rate? Relative growth rate will be equal to the increase which is AF minus AI compared to the initial area so this will be divided by ai that is the initial area per unit time so what will be the answer af minus ai is 10 divided by 10 so this is equal to 1 per unit time so if you want to calculate it in terms of percentage so you have to multiply it with 100 percent so this would be 100 percent would be the relative growth rate Right now, similarly, if you calculate the relative growth rate in case of leaf 2, that will also be AF minus AI divided by the initial AI per unit time. So, this will be 10 divided by initial AI is 50. So, 10 by 50 per unit time that is equal to 1 by 5 per unit time and 1 by 5 if you want to calculate it in percentage this will be 20 so this would be 20 percent so the increase the relative increase in growth for leaf 1 is 100 percent because here it became double but here the increase the relative increase was only 20 percent because initially the leaf was already 50 centimeter square so even though the increase is the same here also it is 10 centimeter square increase here also it is 10 centimeter square increase but since here the initial value was more therefore percentage increase or the relative percentage increase is only 20 percent so the relative growth rate is different for both of both these leaves so now you understand the difference between absolute growth rate and relative growth rate please understand this because this is very very important this is a very important concept Right. So that is how absolute growth rate and relative growth rate differs from each other. Okay. So we have spoken quite a few things about growth. Now let us talk about something very important. What are the conditions that are required for a plant to grow? So what are the inputs which are to be given to a plant so that it can grow? So what are they? Water, the first and the primary necessity of a plant. 
so water so when you talk about the advantages of water in the life of a plant they are like numerous so water helps in photosynthesis which is a basic requirement for a plant photosynthesis is the process by which they prepare food so water is required for food preparation water prevents dehydration now every living organism on this earth for all of them dehydration to, to uh, overcome dehydration is a challenge nobody wants to dehydrate because the moment it dehydrates it is going to die so water prevents dehydration it acts as a medium for all the reactions which take place inside the plant body for example there are so many enzymes which participate in so many metabolic reactions so water acts as a medium for those enzymatic activities minerals are also provided to the plants in the by dissolving it in water so there also water acts as a medium it <clears throat> it also helps in enlargement of cells because cells can absorb water and that's how they can enlarge themselves water also acts as a medium which can dissolve all the waste materials from the cells of the plants and then throw them out of the plant body so that means water is like uh, it serves multiple purposes and it is something which is very very essential for a plant to grow next is mineral nutrients when i say nutrients i am talking about both micro and macro nutrients we have spoken about all these in one of our previous lessons like right mineral nutrition so here we we'll, both micro as well as macro nutrients that is the nutrients which are needed in small amounts as well as those which are needed in large amounts both of them are necessary for the growth of a plant like for example nitrogen phosphorus sulfur calcium sodium potassium so all of them are required for plant growth oxygen of course it is required because you learned about the processes of photosynthesis and respiration right oxygen plays a very important role there so obviously it is needed temperature now each plant need a specific temperature to grow for example if you take a plant to which is generally found in extremely cold areas or in the hilly areas like the pines or the deodar if you try to bring them at in a in an area which is very hot and it is not a hilly area you would not see much of growth of those plants so each plant has a specific requirement of temperature some grow well in higher temperatures whereas some other plants grow well in lower temperatures so temperature also plays a critical role in the growth of a plant light of course plant cannot survive without light light plays one of the most critical role in the process of photosynthesis the pigment chlorophyll its main job is to absorb some absorb some frequencies from the visible light so light plays a very important role light also affects the flowering in a plant like some plants need large exposure to sunlight to flower again some plants need very little exposure to sunlight to flower so light also plays a critical role for the growth of a plant gravity gravity again when when we talk about the tropic movements of a plant how plants grow you would actually see that the root roots of a plant always grow we inside the soil it keep they keep on going deeper and deeper inside the soil and that their gravity plays a role it is because they get attracted towards gravity and because of which they keep on growing towards that so th that also we will talk about when we talk about the tropic movements in plants so these are some of the important conditions which are very much required for growth of a plant thank you Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.